Hey guys, in this video, we are going to sort a vector of custom objects with operator overloading in C++. So we are on hacker rank here and we have a challenge. We are dealing with a messaging system today. And what we have to do is make sure that the order in which we send messages to a recipient is maintained. So if we send messages in this order, for instance, Alex, um, hello, Monique, what's up, and not much, uh, the recipients should also receive them in the exact same order. And um, in the code that they've provided us, we can't change it, but in the code they've provided us, uh, they are shuffling, they are shuffling the messages to just simulate what happens in a real life network. So um, th this is what we, we have to do. I'm not going to go through the entire instructions because uh, what I've just explained to you is pretty much uh, the, uh, the whole point of this challenge. So let's get started with the exact instructions. Okay, so we have a message class here and what do they want us to do? The first thing is um, we need to, to do to solve this part here. Class message requires a um, text value. This has to be a string. And we need to return that string via this getter here. So um, the first thing, I'm going to have the private access modifier. We've talked about that in the previous video. And I'm going to have string msg. You can call it uh, something else if you want. I'm calling it msg. And then here, I'm going to return msg. So uh, this is how our message class looks so far. Uh, the next thing is uh, we need to overload the uh, less than operator. And this is because in the vector here, okay, in uh, inside our recipient class, we're going to try and sort the uh, messages in the order that um, we, we got them. So although we are shuffling here, we are trying to rebuild or reconstruct the order properly by using this sort function in C++. But under the hood, we can actually control uh, how the sorting is handled, right? So this is why we need to use the um, overloading method to overload the less than operator. I'm actually thinking that I can do this part last because uh, it's gonna be more interesting if I, um, if I target the, the other areas first, and then I come back to this specific instruction and you will see why in a moment. But let's deal first with the um, uh, constructor. Okay, we can add methods and everything to it, but we need to leave that constructor intact. So because we have this uh, private member variable now, we need another constructor where we can pass, we can pass it a string right, a piece of text as a string, and then assign that string to our MSG member variable. So again, if you watch my previous video, I like to do it that style, MSG TXT. So now we are assigning the value of TXT to MSG so that whenever we call the uh, get text method and we return MSG, what we will get is whatever we, um, uh, we pass our constructor, all right, the message constructor. So now let's move to the uh, class uh, message factory, which is required to have an empty constructor. So we scroll down here, we have this empty constructor here, which is fine. Uh, but then we need to work on the create message methods. So create message, uh, we are passing a piece of text. What we need to do here is create a message object that is uh, going to receive that piece of text in its constructor, and then we need to return that message. So I'm going to create that message on the stack. In previous video, I think you might have seen me um, do something like this, msg equals new, right? And this is creating a um, message object but this, when we use a pointer, it means we actually creating the objects on the heap. And when you create something on the heap, then you need to be responsible enough to um, uh, delete it when you are done, to avoid memory leaks. 
This is something that has to do with optimization. I'm not going to enter that now. So what I'm going to do actually is simply say message msg and txt like that. So now we have a message object that we can return. This is valid because the um, return type of that method here is message. Um, now let's scroll down. It says uh, the network will shuffle, sorting. So, okay, let's try and run this first. Okay, let's try and run this first. I think it's, it's going to compile properly, but it's going to be wrong. Actually, we have an error. And in this case, the error comes from the fact that we forgot to overload the uh, less than operator. Let me try and do that. Um, it's not going to be correct, but you will see why. Okay. So when you want to overload uh, an operator in C++, this is how we do it. You use the operator keyword, right? The operator that we want to um, overload is this one. We want to overload the less than operator. Now I'm going to have the parentheses and I'm going to pass it message um, objects by reference. That's why you see this ampersand here. So we're not copying that um, message object. We're actually referencing it directly. And now I'm going to say, um, actually, this has to be a Boolean, OK? I'm going to have um, bool answer, OK? And I want to compare if um, our text or message text, so I can say msg, is less than other dots. We are comparing uh, the two strings. Is our um, piece of string here, our piece of text, the string, is it less than the other messages uh, string? So if you are following along, you can see that what we're doing here is not comparing the time at which they came or uh, the order in which they were sent. Here we are rather comparing them alphabetically. So if I run this piece of code now, It compiles fine. There were no errors, but the output is wrong because now uh, the messages, this is our output here, what you can see here. The messages are being uh, received in alphabetical order. You can see this starts with an A, this starts with an H, then with an N, then with W. But in a real conversation, you don't care about the alphabetical order. You want the order in which they were sent to reflect on your end. So to do that, we are going to create a static uh, variable here, uh, a public static variable. I'm going to call that, uh, first of all, I need to make that an inline static variable. It's going to be an int, and I'm going to call that uh, index. This is going to help us track uh, the order in which the messages were sent. But first, I need to have instance index, OK? The instance index is going to be used as a member variable to track um, where each message lies uh, in the vector later on. So here, when we create uh, a message via the message factory class, what we're going to do is take that MSG, okay? Uh, first of all, we are going to access our index like this and increase it. Anytime we increase, uh, sorry, anytime we create a message object, we want to increase the index variable here so that in our program, we can know how many messages do we have, okay? This is a static uh, variable, so uh, it's not dependent on uh, a specific instance of the message class, okay? It stays kind of like global variable in memory. So we can increase this anytime we create a message and keep track of how many messages we have. But in order to make this valid, First of all, I want to have um, a new getter. Maybe it's going to return um, get index. It's going to return the instance index because we want to um, know what is the exact index of a specific message. That's why we have this method here. The other thing that we want to do is have a function, a setter, if you want, to set the index specific message. 
So we're going to say instance index equals i. All right, and then now when we create a message objects in the factory and we are done increasing that, we can simply say, um, instead of increasing that separately in a separate statement, we can say msg dot set index. Yes. At first the index is zero, right? Uh, so we set that index to the message we created and we increase it. So the next message is going to have plus one. Then the next message we create is going to have plus one. So now every single message is going to have an index and via that index, we can track which one of them came first. All right, the uh, messages with the lower index means they came first. The messages with the higher index means they came after. So here, back to our um, operator overloading right here, we can say this MSG, meaning uh, the message from our uh, particular instance here, is it less than the other messages index? Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. I don't mean this MSG, I meant this um, index. Is it less than the other messages index? Um, I think I got this right. I'm kind of <laughs> rushing to, um, to compile this code, but yeah, we got it correct. So we are now comparing each messages index to uh, track which one of them came first. So this here, right? This here, the uh, operator overloading is what is being used by this sort function here. Okay, so when we sort, we pass it the first um, message in the vector up until the last one. So it's gonna sort from the first message down to the last message. And every time it's gonna compare via the um, overloading method here that we have. So let's now submit this code to make sure that we passed all the uh, test cases. And we did. So I, I kind of feel like um, I jumbled a bit, like I messed up my explanation. Uh, so if you need more clarification, please make sure you drop a comment and I will probably make a second attempt at explaining. But I'm going to be making other videos where I explain more about um, operator overloading, more about static variables as well, and perhaps a bit more on um, object-oriented programming. So I think I'm going to stop here because this video is getting a bit too long. If you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, drop a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications. I will catch you next time. Bye.